All right. So now let me show you some operations with complex numbers. So we're going to start with addition and subtraction, and because they kind of go hand in hand, addition, subtraction of complex numbers. Now operations, you know, in mathematics, when we talk about operations, we're talking about the basic operations. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Those are the four main operations in mathematics. So when I say operations of complex numbers, I mean adding them, subtracting them, multiplying them, and dividing them. Addition and subtraction go hand in hand. It's very similar to just combining like terms. Okay? Just combining like terms. So I'm not even going to do addition. I'll just do an example of subtraction because addition is even easier than subtraction. Let's say that I have two complex numbers that I'm subtracting. The complex number 2 minus 3i, both of these are in standard form, and the complex number 3 minus 4i, and I'm subtracting the two. I mean, if this was addition, it'd be a plus instead of subtraction. The reason that I'm doing subtraction is because of the negative in front of this is going to distribute. That's the only difference between the addition and subtraction. If it's subtracting, the negative distribu distributes. If it is addition, then I'm adding. Nothing really changes. So I'll show my work. This distributes, it becomes a negative 3 and a positive 4i. And then I just combine like terms. These are the two real parts. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. And then negative 3i plus 4i is positive 1i. And this is my difference, my subtraction of these two complex numbers, the real part and the imaginary part. We always put it in the form a plus bi. Remember that. Okay, so very simple. Just combining like terms, basically, for adding and subtracting complex numbers. Multiplication of complex numbers. It's important because you need to know this for division of complex numbers. But if you know how to FOIL, you know how to multiply complex numbers. First, outer, inner, last is the same idea unless, I'll show you an example, unless one of the complex numbers is missing the real part. Um, and don't forget we talked about this. I squared is equal to negative 1. Now we're going to use it. So let me, let me see. 2 minus 3i times 4 plus 7i. This is, let's say, the product of these two complex numbers. This is what I want to do. And because they're both complex numbers in standard form, I have two terms and two terms, I can use the FOIL method. First, multiply the first two terms. 2 times 4 is 8. Outer, multiply the two outer terms. 2 times 7i is 14i. Inner, multiply the two inner terms. Negative 3i times 4 is negative 12i. And last, multiply the two last terms. Negative 3i times 7i is negative 21i squared. So I foiled this to get here. All I have to do is now simplify. Now these are like terms, so I could bring them together. Positive 14 of them minus 12 of them. I get 8 plus 2i minus 21 times. What did we say i squared was? i squared is equal to negative 1. So I can replace i squared with negative 1. So this last term becomes negative 21 times negative 1, or positive 21. It changes the sign of the last term because of the i squared. And that means now I have two more like terms that I can combine. 8 plus 21. 29 plus 2i is my final product. Every time you do an operation of complex numbers, whether it's addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, you should always end up with a complex number in standard form. There should be no powers on the i. It should always look like this, a plus bi. Okay? You should always simplify it. Now, here's a situation where I want to multiply two complex numbers and a FOIL would not be required. Oops. A FOIL would not be required. Right? This is a complex number that you know has 0 as its real part. And then this is multiplica multiplying by another complex number in standard form. I don't have to FOIL this. This is a single term. All I have to do is distribute. So it's actually a little bit easier. But for some reason, students get more <laughs> jumbled up with this than they do in, in this kind of scenario where you're FOILing. So just be careful. This is still a product of complex numbers. It's just I don't have to FOIL because this is a single term. 2i times 2 is 4i. 2i times negative 4i is negative 8i squared. This i squared is negative 1. 
So this becomes negative 8 times negative 1, or positive 8, and we write it in this form. Positive 8 plus 4i is my product of these two complex numbers. All of them should come into this form at the end of the day, right? Division. In order to do division of complex numbers, I need to do multiplication. So uh, 2i over 4 minus 3i. Imagine you're dividing these two complex numbers, and you need to simplify this into a complex number of sta in standard form. Um, what we're going to use here to do this are called conjugates. Now, conjugates is very important. You're going to hear a lot of conjugates. Conjugates utilizes a product of um, two terms with the same two terms, but opposite signs or a difference of squares. At the end of the day, you, you'll see what I mean. Um, 4 minus 3i. The conjugate of 4 minus 3i has the same two terms, the 4 in front, the 3i at the end, but the sign in the middle is going to change. That's the only difference between this one and this one. These are called conjugates. The same two terms, the sign in the middle changes. You need to find the conjugate of the denominator. So in this case, the conjugate of the denominator is 4 plus 3i. And take that conjugate and multiply the fraction, both on the top and the bottom, by the conjugate of the denominator. So if I'm dividing complex numbers, find the conjugate of the denominator and multiply the top and the bottom by that conjugate. In the numerator, that 2i distributes, I get 8i plus 6i squared. On the bottom, I get a FOIL situation. First, 16. Outer, plus 12i. Inner, minus 12i. Sorry, plus 12i. Inner, minus 12i. And last, minus 9i squared. Notice that in the bottom, the outer and inner part of the FOIL should always cancel. That's the point of conjugates. It's going to get rid of the i term in the denominator. Because when I have an i squared, it becomes, it becomes negative 1. So it's going to clear out this i squared here. So I'm going to get negative 6. And this is going to be a 16. These are going to cancel. Negative 9 times negative 1 is positive 9. So the denominator is going to go away. There's going to be, uh, there's going to be no i in the denominator. That's the idea of using the conjugate. And the numerator is going to be negative 6 plus 8i over 16 plus 9, which is 25. To, to put it in standard form, right, I get negative 6 over 25 plus 8 over 25i. And this is the standard form of the complex number that represents the quotient of these two complex numbers. So again, you take the conjugate of the denominator, you multiply the top and the bottom by that conjugate, simplify. You should get no more i's on the bottom. And I should not see i squareds. You have to simplify those. And it should be in a complex number in standard form by the end of the day when you're done. So let me do one more um, dividing complex numbers. Let's say I have 3 minus 2i over 5 uh, plus, let's just do 7i. Okay, I'm dividing these complex numbers. I want <clears throat> the quotient in standard form at the end. I take the conjugate of the bottom. Conjugate of the bottom has the same two terms, but the sign in the middle changes, right? So 5 plus 7i, its conjugate is 5 minus 7i. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by the conjugate of the denominator. Now this time to multiply the top, I need to FOIL. So first, I get 15. Outer, minus 21i. Inner, minus 10i. Last, plus 14i squared. Foil the bottom, 5 times 5, 25. Outer, minus 35i. Inner, plus 35i. Last, minus 49i squared. I expect this and this to cancel on the bottom. That's the point of using the conjugates. On the top, 15. These two combine into negative 31i. This becomes the opposite because i squared is negative 1, and negative 1 times positive 14 is negative 14. 25 stays. These go. i squared is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 49 is positive 49. On the bottom, all the i's disappear, and I simplified my i squareds. Combine like terms. 15. Negative 14 is 1. Minus 31i on top. 
on the bottom, 25 uh, plus 49, what is that? 74. Um, all the I terms on the bottom go away. I squared simplifies, and then I put it in standard form by dividing 1 by 74 and 31 by 74, and now it's in standard form, and this is my, ooh, that's ugly. <laughs> and this is my complex number in standard form, okay, which represents the quotient of these two complex numbers.